for generations. Countless products that you need could be spelled MMM. An earnings miss has left investors fleeing for the exits. Are the glory days of 3M an industrial relic? Or can a new CEO turn this household classic into a long run winner? We got a ton of earnings reports last week, but some of them were more remarkable than others, and not necessarily in a good way. Take 3M, the big diversified industrial conglomerate, which delivered a substantial top and bottom line miss that led to a nearly 13% plunge in its stock last Thursday. So what the heck happened? And is there a way the company can turn things around? And how fast can they do it? Let's take a closer look with Michael Roman. He's the CEO of 3M. Get a better sense of what's happening here. It's easy to come on the air when everything's going right. But it takes a real grit to come on when the knives are out for you and your company. Mr. Roman, welcome to Mad Money. Hey. Good to see you, Mike. Thank you. Have a seat. Thank you. you. Know, most people, when they uh, don't deliver a quarter, they don't, uh, they're not objected at the beginning. You were. And I'm, I salute you. At the conference call, you said, look, the end markets weren't that good, and they got weaker. But you were disappointed in yourself and your execution. I know you said that you have a playbook to turn things around. Why should we have the conviction that this is 3M, the blue chip, that we should buy? Yeah, Jim, first of all, thank you for having me on today. <clears throat> it's just a great opportunity to you know, talk about the situation we face. And let me start with what I said at the beginning of my earnings call. We are disappointed in the quarter that we delivered for 3M. And, and it really was driven by some challenges we faced in several end markets that we have been talking about for some time. Right. And the declines in those end markets, China, automotive, electronics, you know, accelerated as we went through February, March. And while we took actions to get ahead of those challenges, we didn't do enough to offset it. And, and our execution led to weak productivity as the way we termed it. And so we are taking action. Okay, and so give me a sense because you said you didn't respond aggressively enough to what you were seeing. Uh, so you were behind the curve. But you also said that you know how to get out of these situations and improve. And 3M has a history of turning things around if it struggles. Yeah, and this is, this is a playbook we know how to do. Okay. When markets soften, when macro softens, you know, we lead into it. We see it in our end markets. We see it in our channel as they react to it. But we know how to take costs down with that. And, and we were behind the curve in what we were doing to take costs down in Q1. The actions we're taking now get us ahead of that curve. That's what we're executing, get ahead of the curve. All right, well, what do you say to people after the stock's 30-point plunge, which we know was the worst since 1987, who looked at you as having a core portfolio position that's defensive with growth. It doesn't seem that the stock can be all that defensive if it could lose 30 points in a day. Yeah, part of our defensive position has been our ability to take actions that keep right. us paced with what we're seeing in the end markets. And, and that, is, you know, that is what we have to get around and get ahead of as we go in the next quarter. Our portfolio, if you're, if you're talking about our portfolio and how it's positioned, you know, in this case, we had three key end markets, which are really attractive parts of our portfolio long term, mm -hmm. but challenged near term. So you got to you've got to execute to protect right. those those attractive markets near term. And we've got to drive the the 3M value model across the broader portfolio. All right. When I was a little boy, my father would come home with what he was repping for 3M and say, look at this. They invented Sashin. I can go sell Sashin, which is a great ribbon product. Uh, the 3M I know from when I was a little boy is the company that invents and innovates. Are there things in the pipeline that can move the needle, make it, more, make it so that even though the end markets aren't that good, you are going to triumph via innovation? Yeah, absolutely. The 3M model is strong. And, okay. and what we're doing in our portfolio to drive you know, innovation, and, and our first priority is driving, you know, new innovation that leads to growth and premium returns for, for 3M and our shareholders. We have a great portfolio for that. We're well aligned. We're taking an active management of our portfolio, which means prioritizing where we get the greatest return on our organic growth. And we have some priority growth programs that are very exciting and, and really gaining good traction as but we go. are there some uh, elements of this great diversified company that maybe aren't working in this new world. You, know, you see what Darius Adamczyk did. He, mm -hmm. gets, he gets Dave Cody's hand over at Honeywell, and then he gets rid of a bunch of companies. It makes it stronger. We know that Greg Hayes makes it stronger. 3M has always been yeah. equal, if not better, than these companies. And you and I both know that. You've been at 3M for yeah. a long time. Are there things, are there radical actions that you need to take? Yeah, and Jim, we are an active portfolio right. manager. It starts with where we target our, our organic growth, but we also look to make acquisitions that will complement what we do, the things that we differentiate ourselves with. Our, what we call our value model, right. our technology, our manufacturing, our vertically integrated manufacturing capabilities. And we will prioritize those opportunities. At the same time, we look continuously across the entire portfolio 
looking to maximize value right. up to and including divestitures like we did with our communication markets division right. in 2018. Okay, so November analyst meeting, pretty bullish. January, pretty bullish. How could things have gotten this bad this fast? Are there other underpinnings, Michael, that you have discovered that make you think, because you were regarded as a thoughtful, excellent manager, mm -hmm. make you think that maybe the hand wasn't as good that you got when you started? If you look at back to Q1, it, it really was those three end markets. Okay. It was a majority of what we faced into. It's 30% of our revenue in automotive electronics in China. And that challenge hit us, you know, hit us in top line and bottom line as we went through the quarter. Uh but automotive was down nine. That was worse than the other, you know, like right. tool works, right. worse than a bunch of the companies, the, the Lear that are our OEM providers. Wrong, wrong part of the car? As we came through the quarter, automotive, and I would say electronics in China saw similar dynamics. Okay. The end market decline accelerated. This was the OEM demand. Kind of right. think of it as the, the OEM equipment. demand. Right. The channel reacted. And so we're serving those those. Those customers through channel, they reacted, they took out inventory. So we saw a multiplier in the quarter in, in automotive, in electronics, and, and a little broader in China. So that was a, a headwind. And that settles out pretty quickly. The channels it does. adjust and they Okay, that's they important react. because yep. I'm trying to figure out whether to tell people, look, it's got a good yield, it's got a good balance sheet, maybe this is the level you get involved, yep. or maybe you have to wait. Yeah, this, you know, that it'll depend on end market demand. Okay. So we lead into challenges like this, we lead out okay. that playbook that we know how to execute and, and getting ahead of the curve mm -hmm. with our execution and, and our cost, you know, cost reductions, we will get in line, we'll lead back out of this as the end markets recover. And, and uh, you know, the inventory, you know, it, it works the other way right. too. They've got to restock as they go forward. Okay, when I went through the annual, uh, I get all the way down to the end, on page 100, there's this note 16, which talks about this PFAS mm -hmm. problem. It's a, a groundwater contamination problem. You paid $850 million to settle with the Minnesota AG. And in the annual note 16, it says there's litigation in Alabama, Michigan, Ohio, Delaware, Maine, New Jersey. That's a lot of litigation. Can it be ring fenced? Should viewers who own 3M, of which there are many, you know that, mm -hmm. be concerned that you can't confine this exposure? Yeah, so the, the reserve that we took, it was around what the litigation we face in our manufacturing disposal of chemistries that we phased out of more than a decade ago. Yeah. And, and we had now enough visibility on negotiations around our manufacturing sites, three in the US and, and two in Europe, that we could estimate, I mean, it was estimable and probable what we faced in the direct litigation on those manufacturing facilities. So we, we have taken a reserve against that. And, and that, you know, that we are careful to say that doesn't include the product liability that, that we face right. with, with PFAS products. All right, one last question. You are the steward of a great American company, and this was a very tough quarter, and I'm thrilled you came here. But I wonder whether the problems uh, maybe take a year, and that that's okay, because they may be deeper than we think, and you know, the way Honeywell turned around, mm -hmm. or is it just something you just say, you know what, knows the grindstone, and people will be rewarded in 2019 if they stick with Mike Roman. Yeah, well, the aggressive actions we're taking to get ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. we'll do that in many ways, and what, our, what we're doing in our operational costs and realigning our manufacturing to the yeah. demand that we see in the end markets, we get on top of that pretty quickly. Within second quarter, don't need we'll a start. break up. Don't you just stick with your knitting, and yeah. you'll come through. And that's execution. That, our team right. knows how to respond. I was with our our team last week. I went out with all the employees. I went out with our leadership team. They have great sense of urgency. They're jumping on it. They understand what they have to do. We'll get ahead of this as as we go through the quarter and into the rest of the year. Some of the some of the restructuring will take longer to play out. That'll take time, and that'll be more towards the end of this year. All right, fair enough. I really appreciate you coming. I know it was a very tough week for you and your shareholders, and I think it's terrific that you came. Jim, thanks a lot. The 3M value model is strong. We'll, we'll lead out of it. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay. okay, that's Michael Roman, CEO of 3M. Of course, make your own judgments. Thank you so much, Michael. May have money Jim, back after the break. Thank you very much. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.